In this video, I'm going to show you basically the steps that I went through building a small 8-foot dinghy. This is one of my older designs known as the 8-foot frugal skiff. There's a whole series of frugal skiffs, uh, 8 feet, 10, 12, and 14. The building method that I used, I call glue and screw. It's not unique. Uh, many small skiffs of this nature are built the exact same way. And so you can use this method to build almost anybody's design out there that you wish. I put together a tutorial step by step. There were 26 steps over a number of videos that you can still see. There's a playlist on my Shoestring Shipyard uh, YouTube channel that you can find about small dinghy building. And it does go into finite detail uh, each step of the way with little tips and tricks. But you may not want to spend that kind of time to determine whether or not you want to build a dinghy. A long time ago, I put together what I call the super fast version, heavily edited, everything sped up. Those 26 steps condensed down to one little two minute video, but it doesn't really tell you anything. It was just to see if there was any interest. And if there was any interest, then you could get into the tutorials. But maybe uh, what we need is somewhere in between, at least this is what I've gathered from feedback. And so that's what I've put together here. There are little uh, tips and tricks that I haven't gone into, I haven't given a full explanation of. I'm just going to do a voiceover through some of the scenes. And so this takes a few more minutes than the super fast version, but it's considerably uh, you know, shorter than going through all the different videos to see the full 26 steps. So moving ahead, if you would like to build your own dinghy, you need a set of plans. I designed, oh, probably the easiest small dinghy to build a design that I've ever put together. I call Simple Simon. It's an eight-foot dinghy. Uh, the plans, the dimensions, the full building instructions are included in my 78-page manual on how to design and build your own flat-bottom skiff. And I will include a link below so you can download the PDF for free. There's no charge. And you'll find those plans if you want to build it. Or you can just find plans of your own that you like. Well, Gidget here decided that she wanted to help. And she wasn't going to leave me alone. So I had to pick her up. Every now and then she wants some attention. And she tries to help out whenever she can. And she's been featured in a few of my videos in the past. She's even been the star of the show in a couple of them. She's a, uh, what we call a schnorky. She's part miniature schnauzer and part yorkie. All seven pounds of her. Here comes the voiceover. You can build Simple Simon if you'd like. And if not, build whatever one you want. These instructions will take you step by step. Like I said, the video it pretty much follows the same way that the instructions in the manual uh, take you. And, uh, and also understand that this is not the only way to build a small plywood dinghy. There are many other methods. There are different ways. There are different trips and tricks. There, you don't even have to follow the same sequence. You can do it in another sequence. This is just one way. It works. I used to teach weekend boat building classes when I had my wooden boat shop on Cape Cod years ago. The dinghy that I feature in this video is one of the ones offered that people could opt to build if they wanted to. These are the basic steps that we took uh, during those boat building sessions. So I think it'll work for you. And if you do happen to build one, if you build one of my designs, I'd appreciate it if you'd send me a few pictures. I'd love to see them. Or if you have some video and holding a little launching ceremony, that'd be great. I'd love to watch that too. You can also help me out a lot. I uh, don't ask anybody for any money uh, to watch these videos. Uh, unless you want to become a supporter on, on Patreon, that's great. But uh, I would appreciate it if you could help me out and help support my channel by liking and subscribing and sharing. Ring that little bell so you can get notified of any upcoming videos. All of that counts and all helps me out quite a bit and I certainly appreciate it. 
My patrons help me out quite a bit by helping me to keep the uh, video productions coming. So thanks again for watching. I hope you like this video. It all starts with a set of plans. You're going to need these plans. Uh, it doesn't have to be mine. It uh, can be a design from someone else. But you're going to need the plans to get all your dimensions and your notes and different data. And uh, then you can start building. And right here, I'm just cutting out the stem out of a piece of 2x4. This boat is fairly simple, and so uh, it's as simple as that, actually, because it's a straight stem, not a curved one. So it's pretty easy to make. There's a picture of the boat when it was finished, the 8-foot frugal skiff. And then I start laying out the lines on a piece of plywood on a flat surface. And I draw all the components full size. And then I start cutting out the components. And I lay the component, I lay all of the parts and components right on that drawing and align them so they, they, they align just perfect. And then I can start gluing them together. But of course, when you do that, you want to make sure that you put some wax paper or something underneath so you don't bond the components to the plywood. And what you see me building now is the uh, mainframe. This particular boat only has one mainframe. And that'll help to find the shape of the boat when the uh, hull sides start going together on the boat. Here's another shot of the finished boat. And after I've made the stem and I made the mainframe, then I cut out the transom. In this case, it's just one piece of three quarter inch plywood. And I had to cut the bevels along the side and on the bottom. Uh, those are given in the plans in this case. And once that's done, uh, you have all the basic components. Uh, and the only thing left is to cut out the side panels. Now the plans show you the shape of those side panels. So all you have to do is lay those out full size onto the plywood. In this case, only one sheet of quarter inch plywood will suffice to make the two side panels and you'll have some left over. So just going by the plans, first of all, you lay out a grid to give you some reference points. And then you look at the dimensions on the plans and you make little marks along each of those uh, vertical lines and you'll see how the shape of the panel starts to lay out. So this is why the plans are so important on a boat that has any kind of shape to it. And then I just carefully mark them on the plywood and then you'll see me take some small brads or, or little finish nails and I'll put the little finish nails not all the way through the wood but just so that they'll hold into that plywood uh, on every mark that I made after I've laid all those out. And with that, I can place a batten around those small finish nails. And I put a finish nail on the other side to hold it into place so I get the curve that I need. You don't put any finish nails through the batten though. That will distort the curve and it'll ruin the batten. But that's all there is to it. And then you lay it out with pencil and then you'll have a cutting line. You take the batten off and remove the finish nails. And uh, at this point, you can, well, you have to do all the other curves and join the uh, a straight line across for the bow and for the stern. And then you have the drawing of the side panel. Of course, then you can go ahead and you can cut out those side panels. But then you'll want to put those side panels together so that you can match them. It's important that each side panel is matched you also want to mark on those side panels the location of the mainframe. Or if you have more than one mainframe, you'll want to locate all of them. And you can make other little notes. Just take a pencil and make whatever marks you need to. Mark the bow, mark the stern, uh, just so you can keep track and you don't get anything mixed up or turned around. That's sort of important. And now you can see what I'm doing. I'm matching the side panels. And usually what I do is I I just take a, you know, a, a drywall screw and I put one at each end right through the side panels. And yeah, it, it makes a little hole, but you can always fill it in later with, uh, you know, some thickened epoxy and it doesn't hurt anything. And then once they're together, they can't move. They're not going to shift around. So then I can start matching them. And as you see me doing there, I was using a block plane. 
and then I take a side panel and I attach it to the stem and I only did that dry I only dry fit it I do the same thing on the other side and then you can see the two side panels are together kind of it forms kind of a shape of a V and then I hang the mainframe into position and I put on what's called a Spanish windlass that's that line that's around the stern there and I just start winding it up and it draws the sides in it helps if you have another pair of hands to help out but you can do this by yourself there's another uh, shot of the finished boat that was built for a nonprofit fundraiser brought in a few thousand dollars in raffle tickets and that worked out well now using the same Spanish windlass I draw it a little tighter and that's when I want to start fitting the stem and again these are all dry fit I'm just putting in some screws but I'm not using any glue at that point because I want to make sure that everything fits properly and I want to be able to make any adjustments uh, it, in, to make sure the boat's not going to be racked. Uh, everything's going to be aligned. Uh, this is all important. And what I'm doing now to make sure it's not racked, I'm just checking diagonal measurements from the stem to the stern on each side and they should both be exactly the same about as close as the same as you can. If you can get it within a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch or so, that's pretty good, but you try to get it as perfect as possible. Because with boats, of course, uh, you want to keep them as symmetrical as you can. Otherwise, it may not look right. And I'm just discussing here on how to fit a chine log. Now, not everybody likes to fit chine logs. Uh, sometimes they'll just use a stitch and glue method, which you can certainly do. In this case, I'm using a chine log and it has to be bent into position and it's measured at each end and make sure you get the right angles and bevels and so forth. Uh, that's all explained in the uh, full length video. Uh, one of the steps, or a couple of steps to do that. And then once it's all fit and everything fits just right, then you go ahead and you can glue it and screw it so that it's installed permanently. And then I go ahead and I plane the edges flat. And as you can see there, I take a straight edge to make sure that I have a nice flat surface all the way across and all the way down the boat. And then I put a sheet of plywood on the bottom. In this case, it's a, uh, I believe it's a 3 8 inch uh, sheet, uh, thick sheet. And uh, I, I just place it on the bottom and I run a pencil around the underside. And then I flip it over and that gives me the line so I can cut the shape of the hull and I'm leaving a little bit extra leaving a little proud that I trim later and what you see me doing here is I make a little tool because the plywood's overhanging and I want to locate where the screws are going to go right into that chine log and I go around with the pencil and mark it so now I know where to put the screws and it also gives me the angle to drive the screws in and then I start cutting uh, ribbons of fiberglass tape which is really just uh, cloth and I, I cut them all to shape and have them all ready to go so I can start epoxying them in place. In this particular case I used a polyester resin but normally I use epoxy resin which is a lot stronger but it's also considerably more expensive. But in a small dinghy like this you don't really have to use epoxy. The polyester works fine if you apply it properly. And then of course after that, once you apply the fiberglass tape, then you have to do a little bit of fairing. Uh, in this picture you just see there, there's the false stem in place. And that protects the forward edges of the side panels, the plywood. And what I'm doing here is I'm turning the boat over. And the reason for that is because I need to, uh, I put on the keel strip on the outside but I want to be able to screw into it from the inside into that keel and so I pre-drilled all the holes I glued it in place with either epoxy or some other fastening uh, some other glue or something and then I went ahead and screwed them in permanently and then I fit the skeg and here you see me doing some fairing and in this case I'm not using expensive epoxy, you know, fairing compounds or anything. I just use simple Bondo. Bondo does make a formulation intended for wood. And uh, you just smear that stuff on and go ahead and sand it fair. 
Here's another product I use. It's a 3M glazing compound. So if you have any little pits, even in the Bondo, after you just went over it, you don't want to have to mix more. Uh, just little tiny pinholes and things. That 3M glazing compound, uh, you buy an auto body uh, supply shops. It works well. And then went ahead and painted it. Uh, just an initial coat. I did a final coat later. And in this case here, I'm uh, now fitting the what I call the intermediate frames. The intermediate frames are important because they're also going to support the risers, which I didn't show in this video, but the risers go in and they help support the thwarts, also known as seats. And it's all structural. Uh, everything, when it's tied together, makes for a very rigid and very strong hull. So I'm just fitting them here in place. And once I get those little notches cut so that they fit around the chines, I can go ahead and install them permanently. And there's one that's installed, or at least it's fitted. And then I'll go ahead and I do some pilot holes. So the screws go in from the outside into the intermediate frame. And so by doing the pilot holes, I can locate the screws in the proper position. And then I can go ahead and I can uh, glue and screw the intermediate frame into place. Now it's not really important what kind of glue you use here. You can use epoxy. I like to use thickened epoxy, but you could use a lot of, uh, you know, polyurethane based construction adhesives. They work pretty good. Um, some people like to use 3M5200. I'm not a big fan of it, but you can use it. And in here, I made up uh, templates for the breast hook and the quarter knees. And then from those templates, I use those to cut out the wood. I'm holding a piece of Hackmatack, a natural knee from Hackmatack, also known as Easton Latch. Uh, these are sliced from the roots of the tree, right from the trunk. It makes very, very strong, uh, you know, knees. And there I'm finally fitting the knee and then um, making some marks so I know where to draw a pilot. I know where to drill pilot holes so that I can go ahead and glue and screw the uh, quarter knee into place. And the breast hook is fit pretty much the same way. There's not much difference there. And you can see the quarter knee installed. And there's the breast hook installed. Uh, I didn't show the installation in this part of the video because it's just the same operation. And then once those are in place, I can install the outwales. And the outwales make up the gunnel. Um, if you want, you can also install in whales. Uh, there's a number of different ways you can do this. In this case, for this thingy, I just used outwales and that was it. Glued them and screwed them into place. And there's some lumber from the local lumber yard, pine or spruce. Um, got it all in the rough, ran it through my planer so I could cut out the thwarts. And those are the rough sizes of the thwarts there. And then there's a template from very thin plywood. And I make the templates and fit them in place first. And then I uh, use the templates to trace onto that wood and I make the, uh, the final thwarts and install them. And you can see them sitting on top of the risers. So then from this point, I was able to put on the finishing touches on the boat. And there you go. There's the finished vessel. And it was set up for the uh, nonprofit Ravel. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What